Hey guys, welcome to Hip Hughes History. This time we're doing the art of the lecture, guys. This goes out to my social studies peeps and anybody out there that wants to listen. What do I think about when I'm planning a lecture or when I'm winging one? Let's go over the basics and let's see if we can't make all of ourselves a little bit better at the storytelling. Thank you for learning, guys. Here it goes. So number one, guys, I always remember, it probably doesn't matter. They're not gonna remember that much. And at the end of the day, the knowledge piece is much less important than kind of the acquisition of skill piece that should be happening in the classroom. I want kids to take the information from our lecture and do something. But I always go in remembering, they're probably not gonna remember much of what I say and what I get across, so it's gotta be big. Concept above content. They're not gonna remember the years. They're not gonna remember all of the kind of vocabulary words. That'll come through the acquisition piece. So your job is to get across sweeping concept and content and thesis. Huge, big ideas that the kids will go, whoa, I get it. And then you have a chance at the real learning down in the classroom. Multimodality, that's a crazy word. But really, what I wanna talk about is engagement. Whether you're using green screen, or you're just in the classroom, you're using your face, you're using your hands, or you're using just your voice with a voiceover kind of thing online, you have to get every mode working for those kids. So whether it's a sound effect, or a word on the wall, or a concept image behind my head, or something I'm doing with my hands, or pulling my ears, or the tone in my voice, I'm doing everything to create meaning. Guys, kids can't pay attention that long unless they're playing Xbox. They actually could pay attention a very long time. It's your job to keep that attention and to keep it focused on meaning making. And you're gonna do that if you're in the classroom with your voice, like I was saying, and body language and moving around the classroom like a classroom teacher ninja. And on your blackboard or your whiteboard, you're gonna have imagery and ideas. Don't put the literal image up. Kids aren't gonna remember that you put a picture of uh, George Washington on a horse and that's the Whiskey Rebellion. Put a big picture of Arnold Schwarzenegger. Get across that idea of strength. That's our job in these lectures. So number two, if you're gonna engage those kids, you have to think about multimodality and you have to think about how you're going to keep their attention and keep them focused on the learning. Building bridges, doesn't that sound nice? You have to go into these lectures kind of with the understanding that you're kind of teaching an alien. And you have to figure out what that alien knows. That kid knows something. They have a primary discourse. They have a way they see their world. And that is kind of the uh, ingredients of this meal that we're gonna use to cook. You don't launch into the academic discourse. That's like throwing a kid into a pool who's never swam before. They're not gonna know what to do. So find out what they do know about. Analogies are bridges between their world and the academic world. So you need to like, I don't know, watch the Kardashians or something. Figure out what the kids understand and then use those to build bridges and slowly walk them over so when you get to that academic discourse of nullification or the 14th Amendment or Hammurabi Code or mispronounce that one, that they're gonna have a much better chance at understanding. So be careful about loving the history so much that you can't make it a little fluffier in the sense that you're using their world and their terms to bring them over into our world so they have a much better chance at remembering it and understanding it. So be careful about falling too far into that history, stay on top of it, and use analogies like a ninja. Concept over content, multimodality, engagement, building bridges. Those are the three big ones, guys. Kids can pay attention. You don't wanna make a lecture 45 minutes, but if you can craft it in a way where you can do five, 10, maybe even 15 minutes, and kids are really engaged, you can get across some big ideas. But it's important, guys, to follow up with that acquisition piece in the classroom. They gotta do something with that knowledge piece. So there you go, guys. Thanks for watching. If you didn't know, we have like 350 videos. It's a little bit cray cray. You can go to hiphughes.com or just go ahead and subscribe right now wouldn't that be nice to do and uh, you'll get updated on the latest videos and you can check out the video arsenal so there you go guys where attention goes energy certainly does flow and we'll see you guys next time that you press beep 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 my buttons <laughs>